Hi, it's Robert from Game Developer Studio and I'm making this little video because I want to show you what's included in the new Fantasy UI pack on the site. When you get the folder, it looks something like this. In it, there are three subfolders, a pre-made panel folder, a construction parts folder and a button icons folder. In the pre-made panel folder, there are just that, pre-made panels and the file formats are SVG for Inkscape AI for Illustrator and there's also a folder which includes uh, exported pings for use in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever other program you like. Uh, the pre-made panels look like this. I've made quite a selection. Now the file sizes are quite high. Well this is a vector but the exported ping files are quite high and the aspect ratio should fit the majority of screens. Here you can see an iPad aspect ratio which is 2480 pixels by 1536 and that's quite high definition so you might have to shrink that down for other things. Going down you've got some other panels that are made um, you can make these uh, fit any screen, they're separate these on top are separate panels, you can get rid of these Scrolling down, we've got a square panel decorated. Now these smaller panels here, these smaller panels are made these for for iPhones and well most types of a mobile phone really. You've got the higher resolution ones, and now here at the bottom you've got lower resolution screens. Uh, we've got we've got panels, round buttons, octagonal buttons, uh, loading bars. Uh, we've also got the button icons. Now the button icons, these icons here, are what's included in the, the button icon folder, which also includes Illustrator, Inkscape and Ping files. So the cool thing about the pack isn't really the pre-made panels, it's the construction pieces that you can use to make your own panels. So here are the construction pieces and you can use them to create your own size panels. Now you can use these small, small ones, individual segments, for creating long, larger size panels. Um, the segments come in left, right, top and bottom because if you look closely you can see that the light must reflect off the appropriate edge. Here it reflects off the right side, it still reflects off the right side. Here there's more light at the top edge than there is on the bottom one which is dark at the top edge. Um, so. I've also included these longer things, these longer bars, for for making quicker files because it gets a bit uh, tedious joining all these little pieces together after a while. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to well first I want to show you a few a few mockups that I created because because I felt like it. Here's a, a panel I made using the elements from the website. I go here. I use the the magic the magic item elements. Oh, not these ones. These ones are the free ones. I use the. Oh, I've got lost now. I use the. I use these magic icon elements from the site, and I also used I use these alchemy plants as well to create these uh, these mockups. Here you can see I made a mockup screen. I also had a go at making uh, a couple of loading bars, a couple of power bars, so you can really use your imagination to do anything you want with these. Okay, so that's basically what's included in the pack. Now in the next part of the video, I'm going to show you the process that I went through to create uh, more panels. Okay, let's close this, we don't need that. I'm not going to do this in Illustrator. I'm going to do it in Inkscape because I think Inkscape's uh, it's more available as it's free. You can also use the pings to do the exact same thing in Photoshop. Really, it just depends on on which you like to work with. Here, yeah, you can, if you're doing it in Photoshop, just export all the pings into the Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to do this with Inkscape. So I'm going to go into the Fantasy UI folder. I'll start from the beginning. I'm going to go into the Fantasy UI folder and I'm going to go to construction parts and I'm going to open the SVG for construction pieces. Wait for that to open. Okay, so here they are in Inkscape. 
Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to set the background here. I'm going to set the background to black. So I need to put the alpha channel up and put it at black. That'll do. Okay. I'm also going to set it up by opening the Distribute and Align, which is this little button down here on the right side. I need this column open. Okay, so it's important to have this open. Now, another thing we're going to do is with the black arrow, the selector tool, I'm going to drag a box and over everything and I'm going to select everything. Now that I've got it selected, I'm going to go to Edit and I'm going to go to Duplicate. This is just Control G, depending on how you've got your system set up. So that's Duplicate. Now, while it's still selected, I'm just going to drag it to the bottom. Now I'm not going to touch these pieces, these are my save pieces and I can always go back to these if I delete something by accident. So to make my panel I'm going to start off with the four corners and I can't be bothered to piece these little ones one by one. I just included them so that you've got, you can create uh, originality in your panels and you can't see continuous repeating theme. One thing I don't like about tiles is is that you always see a repeating theme through the tiles. I like a bit of uh, variation. So I'm going to separate these out and for speed I'm going to use this. This is my left side, this is my right side and I'm going to use my bottom piece. I'm going to use that. It's going to be a rectangular panel. My top piece is going to be the small one and I'm also going to make it not so rectangular. I'm going to pick these two will do. These two are interesting. Pick these two and pull them over. Okay, so now I've got my panel set up there. Uh, let's start work. So I'm going to keep these on, keep these on. I'm going to roughly just plot out where I want each piece to go. And that's my bottom panel. That's my top piece. Okay, then. So first thing I'm going to do is this is all with the selector tool, by the way. I'm going to go up to my line and I'm going to select this to first selected in the drop down box. It must be first selected. Okay, so now I'm going to select these three with the selector tool. Now you can select multiple objects by holding down the shift button and clicking on each one. And I'm going to align these all to the left edge. Now the left edge, see, I don't know if you saw what happened. I'm going to align them to the left edge. Okay, now that they're aligned to the left edge, I'm just going to drag this up a bit. So I'm going to select it. Now I'm going to hold down control and move it up. It's important to hold down control because holding down control locks it so that it can only move vertical or horizontal. You can't move it diagonal or diagonal to the bottom. You can't mistake by one pixel. If you mistake by one pixel, you won't get a nice connection. You'll end up with something like that. Okay? So you've got to hold down control and just move it up. Now that's that piece placed. And I'm going to do the same for the bottom piece. Just hold down control and drag up click and drag up with the mouse. Now that that's done, I'm going to grab these and I'm going to select all of them. It's important to start with the corner one. Must start with the corner one because remember we've got we're relative to first selected and then I'm going to align them all to the top. Okay? And I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to click this and I'm going to hold control and drag it over. Click this hold control, drag it over, click this, hold control, drag it over. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to do the same on the bottom. Started in the bottom corner, I'm going to click this and those, and now I'm going to align them relative to the bottom, which is this one. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to drag them over, I'm going to select this select this and I'm going to centrally align center on vertical axis now that's perfectly I'm going to do the same to this and this the small one center on vertical axis and I'm going to do the same with this center on vertical axis and then I'm going to select this and this and I'm going to center that on the horizontal axis and now I'm going to select the top corner and this one and I'm going to center on vertical axis Oi. now I'm not going to center on vertical axis sorry I'm going to center I'm not going to center I'm going to align to the right side okay so it's important that 
you select this corner first so that this moves and not this okay so if we were to do it the other way we select this one first and then this one you see we'll lose our alignment okay so now I've got that basic panel set up okay so I'm going to save that now that's done so that's the start of a panel now just one thing if we go to uh, if we go to the document properties and we change the color of the page again you can see that the, there's nothing in the middle the background is just it's just what's ever on the background so what we're going to do is I'll leave it at white we're going to put a box for the background somewhere up here okay so my strokes on I'm going to remove the stroke I'll keep it that color I'll keep it black black will be nice and that's it don't want this corner up here comes up a bit too much this down yep that's it that's it I think send that to the back well sorry I'll, I won't use the shortcut we'll go up to object and we'll go raise or lower lower to bottom okay so now there's my panel now what I'm going to do is everything's together I'm going to go up to object and I'm going to group so now I can drag the whole thing around okay then so actually I'm going to put the page back to back to black and now I'm going to put some of these little embellishments in the corner um, let's get these ones the corner ones Let's get these corner ones and let's see what they look like just fitting them over the top. Yeah, that looks all right. Now, you have got a panel included in the folder like this, so I'm not going to do this again. Not even for the demonstration. I'm going to do something a bit a bit cleverer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all four of these by drawing a box over with the selector button and I'm going to go to invert I'm going to invert them like that. Okay, now I'm going to mix them up. This corner down here, I'm going to swap them around. I'm going to put this corner here. Well, if I try inverting them, this corner here. No, I think I like it this way. Although they might be a bit too big, I think. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to shrink them all down, I think. So I'm going to select them all, all four of them. Remember to hold shift, hold down shift, and click on everything you want selected to select them. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to shrink them all down. I'm doing them all together so they all stay the same size. That's it. I'm going to put them back now. Yeah, it's still a bit too big. Uh, remember to you hold control if you want to keep the same aspect ratio which we do okay yeah I think that'll do there we go position these up in the top corners that's it then there we go. Then I think, uh, yeah, let's look. Grab these two here. Grab these. We'll have one of these up here. Now you see that's behind. What I'm going to do is go to Object and Raise to the top. And I'm going to put this over the top. And the same goes for this one. I'm going to put this at the bottom. Now you don't have to go to the menu. You can click this button here. Raise selection to top. Uh, actually, that's the bottom. I've got these mixed up. That's better. And I'm going to make these two a bit bigger. So once again, I'm going to select them both, hold down shift, and now hold down control and drag them out. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the panel. Let's close this window. I'm going to click on the panel and I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to click on this one. So I've selected all three, but I selected the panel first. And now I'm going to vertically align and that just pops them in the middle. Okay, so now I've got that selected. Okay, good. So 
now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate the whole thing uh, edit and duplicate that's control D and while it's selected I'm going to hold down control again and just drag them over to the left that's it so now I've got like a double panel there so there we go let's have a look what we can put in the middle here can we put anything in here put one of these there put that there so now I'm vertically align these that's it so now I've got like a uh, now I've got a, uh, a double panel, I don't know what you could use this for, you could use this for a card game or a versus panel. Uh, let's try something here, let's grab one of these gems and let's uh, let's place it, let's rotate it and we'll, we'll put it here. Let's duplicate it, pull it down, we'll put that there, this, this isn't, let's fix this. That's it. So now I've got a new panel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to export this. Now, before you export on Inkscape, it's important to uh, open the page documents and remove the alpha. Put the alpha right down. Remove the color. Put it on full transparency. Alpha at zero. Okay. And now, with the selector, select the whole thing, and you want to go to File, Export Bitmap and now you can export it at the resolution that you want so let's put it on the desktop and let's save it as new panel demo and this will export it as a ping with alpha transparency export there we go let's see if it's gone out right here we go new panel demo there we go so if you're using unity or whatever you can you can build the panels directly in unity but if, if you're not using unity and you need the panel you need a ping image of the panel you can create any size panel that you want so that's it basically i hope you enjoy using this asset and if you do don't forget to to post any games or projects that you make using the asset in the comment thank you